Hey guys, welcome to Repurpose My Way. I am Shelly and today I have an excellent project for you. Actually, a couple of them. I'm going to start with these eggs I got off Amazon. My Dollar Tree store has them uh, usually, but they're not quite out yet. Uh, when I went to check, they did not have them. So instead of ordering them, I decided to order them through Amazon because I had another order going through. So that's where I got these. I'll have the link down in the description if you're interested. They're hollow little light eggs, just plastic, and uh, they're very easy to work with. I didn't mind using them at all. So I have this egg carton. I have chickens, so I have tons of these egg cartons. And uh, I just grabbed one that was kind of losing its stability and grabbed it and just cut it down into three sections. This is an 18 pack, so three sections of six. So I'm gonna do six eggs per little carton here and we're going to give them a rustic primitive look. So I'm going in with my antique wax right out of the jug and I'm gonna go over all of the outside of the cardboard and crate. I am uh, just using a paintbrush and wiping that on, and I'm not even gonna bother to wipe it back. By the time I get to wiping it back, uh, it's already soaked into the carton, so um, there's no need to, to wipe it back. So I did all around the outside and the bottom, around the edges that I think you're gonna be able to see a little bit. Um, and I didn't do inside the cups because there will be some Spanish moss in there, so you won't be able to see that very well. So I didn't even bother doing that. But I did make sure I did the outsides where I ripped the edges uh, just so it looked nice and aged. Here I'm adding a little bit of black paint around the outside, also on top of the antique wax. And the holder on the right, I put some grubby mix on. So I decided I kind of liked the look of that. And while it was still a little bit damp, I just added some of that grubby mix on there. It's just a little bit of cinnamon and coffee and uh, just some different spices that I like to mix together to make my grubby candles, but I use it really for everything. So this just kind of gives it a nice grubby uh, primitive look. So I just put it on there and just kind of, you can see here, I just tapped it off to get any excess off and it just stuck to the wet spots on the cardboard. Now I'm gonna set that aside and let those dry a little bit and I'm gonna work on my little eggs. Now, like I said, I'm doing three sets of six. So I'm gonna show you little bits and pieces of each one, but I won't show you every step because they're all gonna be pretty much the same. So this first one is going to be my mustard paint. I love how this looks. Once I put the antique wax on, it darkens it up and it gives it such a rustic primitive look that I just love it and I knew I had to do some eggs in this color. So I did two coats of the mustard paint on these eggs. Now, I didn't bother, I just held them in my hand and painted them, but because these are hollow, I think you could probably take a skewer or something like that and make a little hole in the bottom and stick it in there and that way you wouldn't get your hands all gross. Just a uh, pre-warning, my hands are gonna get really yucky throughout this uh, video when I'm doing these, so if you don't like that, I'm sorry, uh, but it, it didn't really do me much good to wash my hands every single time. I got them messy because they were just I was just gonna turn around and get them messy again. <laughs> So uh, that's with the two coats and it gets nice and dark once it's dry as you can see there It's like a nice dark color now I'm just taking a paintbrush with a little bit of black paint on the end of it and making some little uh, spots on my eggs. I like some little little uh, dots on there so there's little black dots and I just shook it around and uh, dried them and then flipped them a little bit so that I could put the spots on the other side or where I didn't have spots. And I just kept doing that and using my dryer uh, and dried them up really quick. This is with chalk paint, so it dries very quickly. So then once they were dry, I took my watered down antique wax. I put it in a little separate little dish there. I watered it down and added it to my eggs. And look at the cool color and the awesome 
primitive dark look that it gets. I love how this looks. I'm just showing you the difference here. You can still see the spots, but you can see that it's aged. Uh, it looks very antique looking, uh, and I just love how that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these exactly the same way, brushing it on and then wiping it back. And then I'm gonna set those down and let them dry just a little bit. Before my eggs completely dry and they're just a little bit damp, I'm gonna take my grubby mix again, my spices, and I'm just gonna put them on, just kind of rub them on the egg and then rub it back. So again, it gives it a little bit more of a distressed, uh, aged look on these little eggs. It just gives it another layer of almost, I don't know, dirtiness to it, um, like it's been around a while. So I, I really like how they came out with that on there. Now I'm gonna add some hot glue to the sides of my egg cartons and add some Spanish moss to that. Now as I go through this, I realize that I really should have pushed it more up along the sides because obviously once you put the egg down, um, you can't really see the moss that's down on the bottom. So. Um, I made sure that a lot of my Spanish moss was kind of sticking up over the sides and up the edges of my egg carton. I had to do this first few before I realized, oh, hey, I need to put some more in there. So uh, I just, I added my egg and then I was like, yeah, I need some more up along the edges so it sticks out more. I want more of that to show. So I just did that, I glued a little bit up around the edges and then it was time to, to add my cute little eggs. Once I got the moss the way that I liked it, I started gluing the eggs down into the little cartons. And then I added a wire hanger and I did not film this, or I thought I was, but I didn't end up filming it. All I did was just make a little hole down in the carton and took some of my mechanics wire and put it down through and folded it up around the edges and gave it a cute little handle. I thought it looked really neat. And then I had a little bit of this, uh, I think it's, lavender little lavender pieces and i cut the the a little branch and was cutting it up and adding it too i mean obviously you don't have to do that but i thought it would look kind of cute with it um, i took pictures without it as well uh, i added a little black and tan check tie to the top to give it more of that primitive look and then this one is finished Now this one's gonna be the, the second color that I'm gonna use. This one's going to be the Waverly Moss color, which is a pretty, pretty green. Uh, and once you add antique wax to that, it just makes it look antique. It makes it look old. Uh, it gives it an aged look. And I think instead of green, because it, it, it kind of uh, leans to a blue-green color, it goes more blue, I think, once I get um, the second coat and the antique wax on. So this is the color with two coats on it of the green moss paint. Now I'm taking a metallic paint. I got this, this is from Deco Art. I got it on clearance and I don't use it very often, but I thought it would look really cool with this green to add some of the gold. It's almost like a, um, a white gold, I think they call it, uh, color instead of a gold gold. So I thought it would be really pretty with this green, and I was right. It was very pretty with this green. I also added some black specks on that as well, uh, just drying with my heat gun in between each time I uh, added my spot so that it wouldn't get like smudged. It was just kind of... Um, a nice spot. So as you can see here, I'm adding my antique wax and the difference that it makes. Uh, and then I also dipped this in, uh, these in the 
grubby mix just lightly uh, these were more dry by the time I got to the grubby mix with them so they didn't get um, the heavy coating that the previous ones had but I really like how these came out as well and I like the pop of gold on there I think it gives it a nice little surprise of uh, something really pretty on there now this color is my latte paint from Dixie Belle it's a nice uh, off-white um, khaki color I would say uh, did all the same steps on this one as far as the black spots and antique wax and then again this one was a little bit more wet when I added the uh, spice mix so this ended up really taking on that that spice mix so I just took a little fan brush and brushed it off a little because I thought it was too heavy on there so then I glued those in as well and I also added a little handle to this one and so these are the finished pictures. I recently picked up this wood charger plate at Hobby Lobby when I was there. They had one left. They're regularly $12.99 and I got it on a deep discount. I only paid a few dollars for it, I guess. I don't even remember uh, what the discount was, but I knew that I only paid two or three dollars for it. And uh, I wanted to use that in this with this bunny calendar picture. This is from a calendar from 2024. This is the March picture from that. And I'm going to uh, cut around the wreath around this rabbit uh, very closely. I'm going to get as close as I possibly can without taking away any of the detail of the flowers. I want to get rid of most of this white that's off it, but I like to keep all the little flowers that are kind of sprouting out from this wreath that kind of stick out. I want all of that to stay. Uh, there's even a couple little bumblebees that are there and I try and cut around those as well to keep those in the picture. So I just kind of, um, it, it takes me a while and I just kind of go around and um, cut those out. And I think it's going to fit nicely on this plate. The only thing that I regret is that I didn't paint around the edges of this plate. I really didn't like the distressing and for some reason I thought um, that it would be okay and it did come out okay uh, but I almost think I would have liked it without all the weird distressing. Hobby Lobby sometimes does weird. Um, it's not really random distressing. It's like very automated. I don't know how to explain it, but as you can see here, all the lines, everything is just like evenly spaced, if you can tell. Um, and I would have liked to have painted that and then distressed it on my own the way I wanted it, but I didn't do it that way. I should have, but I didn't. Uh, I was trying to just use what I had and um, not paint over it, and I should have. But anyway... <laughs> So uh, I think it came out okay anyway, but um, what I'm doing here is just take, I'm just going to decoupage this on. So I'm using my Mod Podge and putting it to the spot on the plate where I want to add my little rabbit picture. Now this is just perfect because all the little flowers that stick out go up over the little edge of my plate, which I think is so cool. I could have cut those all off and it would have all just been down in the middle part and that's it. But I really wanted the flowers to go up over the edge and you'll see in a little bit, I find some more flowers in another calendar that I had and I'm gonna add those two as well to the picture as well and just make it uh, even more part of the plate and not so much just sitting down in the middle of it. So I just finished adding my Mod Podge. I put fairly thick coat because these um, calendar pages are a little bit thick so I wanted to make sure that it was sticking down really well. I did get a few little uh, 
I guess, little wrinkles in it. And that's fine. I'm, I'm really, this is going to be a, a, a primitive piece. So I'm not really too much worried about the wrinkles. I'm going to sand a little bit of those out later on. But once I get the middle part on, I am now taking um, my Mod Podge and just going over the little flowers that stick out over the edge and making sure those are glued down really well with my Mod Podge. And then I'm just sealing them in. Um, I just put a little underneath and then seal over the top of them to make sure they're down really well. I mentioned I found some more flowers from another calendar, which is last year's calendar, the Farmer's Market one. And I was going through and found these and I thought the colors matched really well with the picture that I already had. So I cut out just a couple. This one is the, the lavender pieces. So I got the purple and then I cut out a one that was green. I think it was like a basil or something. Um, and I just cut those out and I, again, cut them very close to the the picture so that I didn't have a lot of the white sticking out. Added some Mod Podge in little spots here and there where I wanted to add more flowers so that they stuck out even more from the wreath, if that makes any sense. You'll, you can, uh, you'll be able to see here in just a second. It will change and you can see where I did uh, just kind of sort of random spots of the pieces sticking out here and there and again I just wanted to make this look more uh, to fill in more of the plate make it look more full and um, just I just thought it would look really nice this way so I added that I also added I found a couple um, more little bumblebees that I thought would be cool. So I added more of the, I say bumblebees, they weren't, they were honeybees, I'm sorry. Um, more honeybees and I just randomly cut out a couple and added them to the plate as well. So you can see here, I have a couple more bumblebees and uh, or honeybees. And then this page is from this year's calendar, a different one, another different one, locally grown uh, from this one. And I really like this picture uh, and I wanted to use the Hello Spring, but I realized early on that the letters were just too big and I would have to cut out a lot of the spring part in order to get it to fit. And it just wouldn't, it wouldn't work. But at the bottom, it had this little saying, um, bloom where you are planted. And I thought that was a really nice little saying. And I thought if I trimmed it up, it would go on this plate and look really cute because of all the flowers and everything. So I trimmed up the bloom where and glued those down up near the bunny's head and ears. And then uh, you are planted, I added down at the bottom. So um, I just thought that that would look really cute with those little words on there and it came out pretty nicely, I think. So I used four different calendars from last year and this year and took pieces from each of those and made this cute little plate look a little bit more springy, maybe a little more Easter and something that you could put out and I love the bright colors of it and how sweet is that little bunny. Now the last thing I did is take some sandpaper, some light sandpaper and just sand it over the picture just a little bit and took out or took down some of the little wrinkles that I had in the paper and just flattened it out just a little bit. I also went around the edges of the uh, plate just to give it a little more of a distressed look. I then took a little bit of the Dixie Bell dirt that I have. It's this powdery dark color and used my finger because I knew that I could hold back on putting too much on because I didn't want this to look too dirty. I just wanted to make it look a little more aged. Uh, so I just used my finger and I added it to and rubbed it in and because I sealed it with my clear sealer it was easy for me to use my hand to just wipe back what I didn't want and I think this just gave it a little more 
of an aged look. I hope you enjoyed my primitive spring projects today. If you have a favorite, let me know down in the comments which one, and if it's the eggs, which color is your favorite. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.